Hi, we're down here at Powell Street and Market here in San Francisco downtown. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. And we're down here with AnswerSF.org uh, covering the protest here. So glad you could join us. So the demonstration will be starting here in a few minutes. And this is the busiest corner here west of the Mississippi. So we'll be sure to see plenty of coverage down here. Covering this endless war that we have here in the United States. See if a few of our occupiers are here. Anyway, you're with Freeman Sullivan. We're down here at Powell Market in San Francisco, covering the war against Syria, the war against Iraq. It seems like our present administration and previous administrations, all they want to do is start wars, endless wars, again and again and again. So we're endlessly down here protesting. Uh, this demonstration is sponsored by AnswerSF.org which is a national coalition. It's been around forever, since at least the 80s, to my recollection. So we should have some speakers up here shortly. In case you're wondering what's going on, there's going to be some speakers. And a short march up here to uh, Union Square. I can't uh, tell you where the march is going to, but I've done this many times before. So we're glad you're going to join us, hopefully. As always, San Francisco is a hotbed of political activity. And if you'd like more information about this protest, you can go to ANSWER, answer sf.org, to find out for more information. Or you can go to the beloved website up here of the radical movement here in San Francisco, which is indiebay.org. Excuse me, sir. No problem.
But how about it? Box screen and stuff? Playing a park? What I mean is that's the playing a park or is that the people who need the park? We're just down here. We're just wondering if anybody really gives a shit about whether anybody drops any bombs on another fucking country. You know, how many people really fucking care if there's a state of endless war in this country, right? Like, come on, give it up. People that are watching, if anybody's watching at all, if anybody really gives a fucking shit about what goes on in this fucking country, come on, are we the last towers? All right, everyone, we're going to be starting this program soon. Thanks for everybody who's walking out, coming off of work, to come to this important event. Especially the people walking by, the reason why we have these demonstrations here. Because so many working people who travel from all over the Bay Area come here for their day-to-day -day work, to make a good salary, to make a living, to build a future for their families. That's why we come and that's why we work. But what we want to point out is in the day-to-day, -day, the U.S. government has often made decisions against the will of the people and actually has made the decisions that cost us all that hard work. Right now, starting on Tuesday night, there was a bombing. The bombing campaign started in Syria. And we felt it's important to come out and speak on the issue. Yeah. Because just like every other intervention by the U.S., just like every other war by the U.S., the U.S. always lies to people, fear mongers, people, Tells people that halfway across the world is a threat. Is a threat that will bring down this country. Is a threat that will come to their homes. But what we tell the people here is that what is the real threat? When this economy is tanking? When no dignified wages are available? When public transit is breaking the bank account? When you have no health care? When the government spends millions and millions of dollars on launching a war abroad, what is the threat? The threat are these policies, these policies that launch vicious, murderous, inhumane wars in the Middle East and leave nothing for us, provide nothing for our people, and let alone provide a future for the people that they bomb. So we're here to point to the hypocrisy that the U.S. claims that through bombs, through killing, they'll bring about peace. That is Obama, the peace laureate, the person who received the Nobel Peace Prize, representing the biggest hypocrisy of the system, that somehow you can bomb a country and declare peace at the same time. Syria is just another excuse, brothers and sisters. Almost 12 years ago, Iraq, with the Iraq war, million people were killed. More millions were displaced. And yet, they claim that coming in again and invading again the region, which is volatile due to U.S. intervention, is going to fix that. So we're here, brothers and sisters, because it's important that the people know that we in the U.S. are against this war. That regardless of the propaganda and the fear mongering, we are against this war. We're against their bombs. We're against their killings. And that's why we're here, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this demo. We're going to have some chants. U.S. NATO hands off Syria. Let's see if we can get it started. I know it's been long. Ready? U.S. NATO hands off Syria. 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 U.S. NATO hands off Sy
Casey from the Answer Coalition will be co-chairing with me today. Good evening. You know, you guys can step in a little bit. Come up here. I will, I'll turn it down. Can you turn it down? All right, we'll turn it down a little bit. You can be here. My name is Natalie Hreezy, and I work with the Answer Coalition. Answer stands for Act Now to Stop War and End Racism. We've called for a national week of action all across this country to say no to the U.S., to the French, to any of the NATO countries that are either bombing or considering bombing, as Britain is, Syria. Syria, Iraq, and the Middle East have gone through decades of attacks like this. Decades of bombings, of sanctions, of all of these things that all fit under the category of war. A war waged by one after another U.S. government. Not just the Obama administration, but previous administrations for the last two decades have tried to destroy independent states in Syria, in Iraq, anywhere in the Middle East, where those states stood for resources for the people rather than resources for U.S. imperialism. Here in the United States, I am a public school teacher. In the public school system, I teach children from preschool to fifth grade. And right now, we're considering a strike here in San Francisco. And in districts, there's my son, and in districts across the country, across the nation, Teachers and parents and students are coming together because we are repeatedly being told there is no money for education. We are told over and over and over again there's not enough money for San Francisco teachers and paraprofessionals to be able to live in the city where they work. There's not enough money for new textbooks, paper, art classes, PE, small class sizes. Across this country, every social service is being cut. Yet, the airplanes that are flying over Syria today, yesterday, and that will continue, and some estimates is that this bombing could continue for years. Let's think about that for a second. Millions and millions and millions of dollars are being spent on what? What do those bombs do? What do those planes do? They kill people. That's their intention. That is why they were built. They murder families. They murder people across countries that have never done anything to people in the United States. And we stand with the people of Syria. And we stand with the people of Iraq and Palestine and anywhere that is facing this onslaught right now to say money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Before we start our chant, I want to say that the United States government actually owes reparations to Syria and to Iraq. The situation that exists right now with the growth of IS, of the Islamic State, which is not a huge force. It's a force that could be dealt with immediately by what existed in Iraq 10 years ago. That government could have dealt with it. That situation has been created by the attacks on the Middle East. So we stand here to say, U.S. NATO hands off Syria. Ready? Money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. You want money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. It's really important that everyone tonight hear us. So I want to see if you can get a little louder with the chanting. U.S. NATO, hands off Syria! 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 I'm going to introduce Mazum and Jeannie to speak next. He is an organizer with the Answer Coalition as well. Brothers and sisters, 
listeners, thanks for being here. Uh, this was a demo on short notice, and we still have a considerable number here. And if this bombing continues, which unfortunately is likely to continue, we look forward to growing ranks of the people again joining the anti-war movement, not buying into the latest excuse, the latest uh, pretext for bombings. One thing we have to keep in mind is that the U.S. has really never left the region. Only three years ago did the U.S. end the occupation, the eight-year occupation of Iraq, and what's going on in Afghanistan. Since 2001, the U.S. has been occupying and they're signing agreements with the new government that they'll stay there even longer. So, U.S. intervention in the Middle East has never stopped. It's been going on in many, many different areas. It's been going on in many forms. And the Washington strategists, what they hope for is to create client states that will make it possible for them to extract the oil, to extract the natural resources, to find allies for the state of Israel in its repression of the Palestinians and the displacement and murder of the Palestinians. And look what it has done. Look what it has done to Iraq. The second point, as we talk to people, as we hear about what the U.S. should do, well, the first thing is, it's not the U.S.'s problem. The U.S. does not have the prerogative to go anywhere in the world, even if it can prove that there are forces that the U.S. Don't, don't, doesn't like and even if they can prove that there are forces that the people of the region don't like. But even much more important than that, how did ISIS come into being? And how did ISIS become such a strong force to now occupy roughly a third of Iraq and a third of Syria? First, we have to look at Afghanistan and the birth of the Mujahideen. That was a CIA operation, the biggest operation up to that time. The funding of the Mujahideen. Out of the Mujahideen grew Al-Qaeda. And of course, ISIS has only split off from Al-Qaeda of Iraq a year, a year and a half ago. During the civil war in Syria, the U.S. has decided, as if it's the U.S.'s place to decide, that Assad must go. And because of that, for over three years now, the U.S., either directly or mostly through its client states, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Jordan, and others, United Arab Emirates and others, has provided funding, has provided training, has provided arms to the rebels. And guess what? The rebels, most of the rebels are not even the quote, pro-democracy rebels that the U.S. would like to be. Not that the so-called pro-democracy rebels are really pro-democracy. They really take their orders from Washington, the Free Syrian Army, the Syrian National Coalition, those kinds of forces. But the majority of the forces in Syria fighting the state have been jihadists. And they have received weapons from the U.S. client states in the region. So ISIS became that strong for that reason too. But another reason is the U.S. overthrew the independent state of Iraq, the secular state of Iraq, and instead when the opposition to the occupation got stronger and stronger, the U.S. saw in its interest to promote ethnic violence. There were very mysterious bombings of shrines, both Shia and Sunni. There were the British soldiers that were caught wearing, uh, you know, clothes that, you know, made them look like the locals, and they had explosives with them. The U.S. wanted the Iraqi people to fight each other as Shia and Sunni. And sure enough, even though the U.S. could not defeat the resistance outright, it did create a situation where in Iraq, there is a majority Shia government that's heavily sectarian. And guess what gives rise to a force like ISIS, which is a reactionary force to be sure, but what gives it the excuse to claim it is representing, it is speaking for the Sunnis of Iraq and Syria. Well, one reason is that the government in Baghdad, the one that the U.S. has installed, has been heavily sectarian. So, as we are asked, what should we do about ISIS? Well, we, as the people in the anti-war movement, we should continue our opposition, we should continue building a movement against the war, against the bombing, and against the continued occupation of Afghanistan, against the continuation, uh, continuing occupation of Palestine. 
What should the U.S. government do? Stop the bombing. The U.S. government is not following the motivation of helping the people. The U.S. seems to have found a back door to making its dream come true. Its dream is redrawing the map of the Middle East, setting up client states in every country where there were not client states, Iraq, Syria, Libya, of course we know how that went. And we should not fool ourselves into thinking that a force, a criminal force that the U.S. government and the coalition of the willing that have been the cause of so many hundreds of thousands of deaths in Iraq, we should not confuse that with a reason that this government, the U.S. government, is all of a sudden there to make good things happen. No good that comes out of U.S. bombings in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and elsewhere. So U.S. out of the Middle East. Again, as people are walking by, a lot of people also coming off of work, stopping and listening. It's important because sometimes this is the only real news we get. It's really hard to look in everyday media when you get off work and everything from CNN, MSNBC, Fox. Whatever, I'll get over this way. It doesn't matter whether they claim they're right wing or, or liberals. The goal is the same. It's invasion. It's occupation. It doesn't matter if it's a Democrat or Republican. They're for the same thing. So as you're walking by, it's great to see people stop and listen to the speakers so that they can make an informed decision. Sometimes people blame the American people. They say they're too dumb. They don't listen. But that's not true. The problem is that how are you supposed to make a decision when you don't know what's going on? When you're working 10 hours, you're working 12 hours, you don't have any time, there's no information available. That's the problem. So we're out here protesting, that's why we do this. Please, take a flyer, learn more about the situation. Tell people, if you're using social media, again, inform people. The social media now is so important to dismiss all the propaganda by the U.S. They haven't controlled that yet. Please, it's important that you get involved, you sign up, because this isn't going to stop with today. It isn't going to stop with several protests. It's got to be a movement, a movement for real change. So we're going to go. No justice, no peace. U.S. out of the Middle East. Let's see if we can do that. Ready? No justice, no peace. U.S. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Got a crowd of about 200 here at the uh, Powell Market here in San Francisco. No justice, no peace. All right, so our next speaker is Juliana. She's from Occupy San Francisco. Yay. Please give hey, we got a crowd of about 200 people down here at Powell Market in San Francisco. So if you're here in San Francisco Bay Area, come down to Powell Street Park. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Juliana with Occupy San Francisco. I am here because I'm outraged that this is happening and that this keeps happening all over the world. I have a little girl. She's almost two years old. And I think about all the children who are being slaughtered overseas by our government, our tax dollars, our drones. And this is not the world that I want my daughter to grow up in. Innocent men, women, and children are dying. And that's not OK. So I'm really glad to be here today with everyone. I know this was an emergency demo short notice, but I'm, I'm so happy to see so many people here. And I hope that for the people who are walking by, that they're paying attention and that they're listening. I know that we're all somebody's children, right? And some of us have children, or we know people who have children. We like children, and we don't want them to be bombed. It's not OK. So. Let's stand together for a better world. U.S. out of Syria, free Palestine, stop police brutality in Ferguson, save our children. No more war on children. That is what's going on, and it's not okay. So let's do what we can to make it stop. Thank you very much. U.S. NATO, hands off Syria! 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 
Oh, I'm sorry, that was a poor introduction. Kurt from World Can't Wait. Hey, Kurt. And the World Can't Wait. U.S. out of Syria. The United States began the bombing campaign two nights ago, almost exactly a year for President Obama's initial threat. So what are we doing? Bring the mic closer. Bring the mic closer! Okay, guys, I gotta go to the bathroom, man. I'll be back. So, our next chat is Occupation and Crime.